Good afternoon. Welcome to the 2021 P4G Seoul Summit Thematic Water Session. Now, at this time, there is a session on water that is most closely related to our human lives and at the heart of all global ecosystems. Now, let's officially begin 2021 P4G Seoul Summit Thematic Water Session. 오늘 토론을 통해서 물 문제 극복을 위한 스마트 혁신의 중요성을 인식하게 되고 또한 기술 개발을 위한 노력과 투자를 확대하는 한편 보다 통합적인 물 관리 정책 개발이 촉진되기를 기대합니다. 이번 세션의 결과로 선언할 기후 위기 극복을 위한 탄소 중립 물 관리 솔루션이라는 실행 촉구문을 통해서 탄소 중립 시대에 나부터 바로 지금부터 모든 사람들이 함께 맑고 깨끗한 물을 누릴 수 있는 기술 정책, 거버넌스의 굳건한 주춧돌이 되기를 희망합니다. When will you be 94? And hopefully you'll be as energetic as Grandma Hilda is now. Maybe you'll even be living in this same house. And maybe your 10-year-old great-granddaughter will be visiting, sitting with you in this kitchen in 2102, just like you are sitting here now. When will your great-granddaughter be 94 years old? Your grandma taught you, you will teach your great-granddaughter, you can have a direct impact on the future right up to the year 2186. Imagine that. Because in the next 100 years, we expect all the elements of water on our planet to go out of balance. The idea is that the issue is so large that it's in a way larger than language. And to understand this issue, sometimes instead of looking at graphs and data, you have to look around the issue to find a connection to the heart from the brain. And how do we relate to time and uh, how time shapes us and how we shape time? And this is a difficult thing to grasp, how nature has left geological speed and entered human speed. A glacier should not melt in a single lifetime. A single human being should not witness a glacier vanishing. But this is the case and a fact that is happening now. So how do we connect to time? How do we feel urgency when a scientist says 2160? So our time is the time of the people that we know and love, the time that shapes us, versus the time of the people that we will know and love. So the next 30 years are all about this. The next 30 years, we have to get CO2 emissions to zero, and we have to fundamentally change our reaction to the relationship to the future. We have to understand that 2160 is an intimate date, and everything that is happening then is based on the decisions that we take now. In politics, in technology, everything we do now counts and matters, even more than ever. Thank you very much. And we'll need these as we move towards accelerating the climate and water agenda, because the climate crisis is also a water crisis. And looking at the figures, it's clear just how much needs to be done. We need to scale up green, innovative and climate smart water management initiatives into commercially viable solutions, ventures and partnerships that can be rolled out globally to the benefit of regular people as well as shareholders. We need solutions like the Valuing Water Initiative, which is intended to change the way we value water in policy, practice and finance, with the aim of bringing water security closer to all. Governments can create the right conditions, but to make it a success, we need the market. This is why initiatives such as P4G are vital. P4G is a very important part of 더 이상 탄소 중립을 지체할 수 없습니다. 물 분야에서의 탄소 중립을 위해서 바로 지금 
물을 잘 관리하고 재이용하여 물 사용량을 줄이며 물 처리에 드는 에너지를 효율적으로 절감하고 신재생에너지를 적극 활용하여 탄소 발생을 줄이는 등물 관리의 전 과정에서 선제적이고 과감한 전환이 필요합니다. 좋은 물 거버넌스는 먼저 다양한 주체의 참여가 보장되어야 합니다. 물은 경계 없이 흐르고 순환하며 시간과 공간에 따라 이해관계가 끊임없이 변화하고 수문학적 경계와 행정적 또는 국가적 경계가 일치하지 않는 경우가 많아서 불가피하게 갈등이 발생합니다. 어느 한 지역의 수자원이나 전력 확보를 위해 설치한 댐이 다른 지역의 환경을 파괴하고 결국 생존을 위협하는 사례를 세계 곳곳에서 적지 않게 볼수 있습니다. 따라서 물거버넌스에는 자연수계의 수리학적 영역인 유역을 중심으로 중앙정부, 지방정부, 공공기관, 기업과 시민 등 물순환 체계에 속해 있는 모든 분야와 연관된 주체가 모두 참여할 수 있어야 합니다. 우리의 사회 시스템을 담대하게 전환하는 일에 모든 역량을 집중해야 합니다. Welcome to the P4 g s m a t i c World Water Session with the, the theme of Carbon Neutral Smart Water Management for Climate Resilience. I'm s a n g g y u n Cha. I'm grateful for your participation today. This session is to share the up-to-date knowledge and information on carbon neutral smart water management for climate resilience towards sustainable development. The current state of art and trends of smart water management will be shared to our audience. Three core pillars of today's discussions are first, innovative technologies, second, well-developed policies, third, good governance. Today, this discussion goes in the following order. First, wise water solutions to climate resilience through innovative technologies. Second, policies and the best practices of water management for climate resilience. Third, policies and good governance for climate resilience and water management. Ms. h i r o s why don't you go ahead first? Recently, the EU, EU introduced the policy package of European Green Deal to achieve the carbon neutral goal in 2050. Suez is the leading company in the global water industry. Please tell us the most important issues in the global water industry and the relevant business cases of Suez. What a company like Suez, that is a global leader in the environmental services and very especially on the water uh, with very wide presence across the world. So um, we believe that the environment, climate, economy, quality of living, everything is very interconnected. So as an European company, basically, we've been very much involved from the European Green Deal. and we had the chance to, uh, to make some recommendation on the water and on the waste sectors. So the, the first one I would like to, uh, uh, to share with you is the combination of desalination with the supply of renewable energies. And we've created an alliance with energy partners to make sure that the desalination plants on top of optimizing the energy consumption come mixed with renewable. It can be uh, wind farms, it can be uh, um, solar panels, it can be other means uh, modeling to the oceans, but basically that we couple those two technologies to make a carbon neutral effect at, at uh, regional level. A second element I would like to share is basically all the big, uh, uh, the, the big potential of the digital in the water tools. digital to improve the, the use of the water and optimize municipal and industrial consumption, but also to optimize floods and in case of extreme events. So today we are managing remotely the different weather forecasts to make sure that uh, all the pipes and the reservoirs are aligned to make sure that when there is a flood, we, we, uh, we sort of uh, capitalize as much as possible the, the water uh, being dropped. Uh, and this avoids uh, impacts in the, urban, in the urban surface. 
Now I would like to ask Ms. Sankaran about the use of technologies. I understand Kaptos is using AI for predictive analysis in water management. What is the current state of art, and how does this help to cope with the global climate resilience? So when you think about water management, fundamentally the first step is how do you digitize all assets? People have collected water data over decades, but it's in different shapes and forms. So how do you first digitize all the assets so you have a common baseline? The second thing is you build an entire decentralized sensor network. There are lots of different types of smart sensors around now in the market. How do you build a very strong decentralized sensor grid network so that you have distributed real-time intelligence that's able to provide you the kind of insights that you're missing today? Any understanding of all the problems we're thinking about towards climate resilience starts with first understanding of data at the ground level. And that means collecting the data and actually visualizing the data, assessing the data, parsing it, and being able to make data more, um, I would say information rich rather than information poor, because we tend to have a lot of data, but then we don't realize what's actionable, what is, insightful in that process. And that's part of uh, the core Keto's mission. Can we potentially prevent a disease outbreak in the future? This is Christelle Tuizera. The appropriate technology should be selected according to the conditions of it, each region. Uh, the water access Rwanda is contributing to the water supply, not only in Rwanda, but also in the neighboring countries. Uh, but where we come in as a, as a business case now with water access right now, one, we're very focused on not repeating the mistakes of the past. So we're looking at creating uh, water grids that are more sustainable, don't lose as much water to leakages, uh, don't lose as much water to revenue losses, don't let water be contaminated without detection, but also provide water that does meet the human right to water, which means water that is accessible, that is affordable within 3% of a person's income and provides sufficient amount of water, at least the 50 liters recommended by WHO. Um, so there as a company, what we do, um, we focus on looking at the technologies that enable that kind of sustainable access. And we create innovative business models that create triple bottom line gains. So we're looking at a business model that will drive profit for our company but at the same time be driving positive results on people and positive results on the planet. I would like to ask Ms. Sarah from the World Bank Group. As you mentioned at the World Bank, we've just launched our new corporate commitment, our Climate Change Action Plan, which sets a goal that 35% of all World Bank financing must have climate co-benefits equally shared between adaptation and mitigation. What we need to do is really help countries think about how to embrace a fundamental new development paradigm as how they think about water. First, how they're gonna to adapt to the variability in the water cycle that will result from climate change, but also the whole mitigation agenda, how to help through the water, investments in water to reduce GSG emissions as much as possible and how they manage and use water. And again, as many other speakers said, this is not water for water's sake, but water to generate energy, to make food, and to deliver the health outcomes. And for, of course, we learn from Korea how water is so important to unleash the potential of cities. But while we look at uh, new sources of financing, it's very, very important to manage the existing funding better and more efficiently. And that's what we see a lot of losses in the system and inefficient um, use of existing funding. But in addition to that, of course, we need to crowd in additional funding and that's gonna be required from the public sector, from domestic finance, from the private sector, and lots of opportunities to crowd in PPPs. K Water in Korea takes in charge of national water management, including water supply and the dam control. Please tell us about climate crisis management of K Water and the, and the result of it. 어, 작년 11월 공기업 최초로 어, 기후 위기 경영을 선언했고 기후 변화 완화 및 적응을 위한 노력을 사업 전반에 반영하고 있습니다. 먼저 기후 변화 완화의 핵심인 온실가스 감축을 위해 신재생 에너지를 대폭 확대하고 
저에너지형 물관리 전환을 추진 중에 있습니다. 수력과 조력 발전에 더해 K-Water가 2012년, 2014년 국내 최초로 상용화한 수상 태양광 및 수열 에너지의 노하우를 댐과 수도 인프라와 융합해 지속적으로 신재생 에너지 개발을 확대해 나갈 계획입니다. 물 생산에 있어서도 K-Water의 모든 정수장에 대한 탄소 중립을 추진 중에 있고 현재 두 개의 정수장이 달성되어졌습니다. 이러한 노력을 기반으로 2035년에는 국가 온실가스 감축 목표의 3%에 해당하는 온실가스 790만 톤 감축을 실현해 나갈 계획입니다. 기후변화 적응을 위해서는 인공지능, 디지털 트윈 등 4차 산업혁명 기술을 활용한 스마트 물관리 및 디지털 전환에 박차를 가하고 있습니다. 드론이나 빅데이터 등을 활용한 스마트댐 수량 수질 안전관리 체계가 구축 중에 있고 국가 상수도 전반에 AI 및 ICT를 접목한 스마트 물관리 구축을 2023년까지 완료할 예정입니다. Now our last topic today is the common enabler of previous We discussed the two pillars, which is the good governance and the policy for climate resilience and water management. Please share your thought on the solution to balance the, those complex interests between countries and regions having transboundary issues. Transboundary water really does matter. There are about uh, 260 water basins around the world that, uh, that are managed uh, across boundaries. But it's possible, I think, to see those management, that potential tension in another way as an opportunity for cooperation and, uh, and, and, a, and a real benefit in a sense. But at the same time, about 300 transboundary agreements uh, on how to share water have been, uh, have been uh, concluded. So I think there's a strong case for seeing uh, the, the transboundary management as a real opportunity for progress and, and cooperation. It's important in that management process to have strong governance uh, without information that's uh, common to all. And so the discussion we've had earlier about uh, digitizing data, making uh, its interpretation widely available, uh, democratizing it, uh, I think was what Mina said, that's very important as well. Uh, and that will underpin uh, any uh, successful management of, uh, of transboundary re resources. We, we draw on the experience that we've acquired in the 25 years uh, of the partnership. Um, with our uh, 3,000 partner organisations around the world, it just recognises the fact that decision-making about water is essentially political, uh, and that means that uh, fundamentally all of the, the stakeholders, as I said earlier, all of the stakeholders uh, in the resource that we're just making decisions about, all of them have to be involved in some way or other. Decision making is based on uh, on sound governance structures and practices. Uh, it's going to be successful. It follows that water policies and management uh, play a central part in adapting uh, to climate change. So uh, nature-based solutions face uh, barriers, uh, as many other environmental policies, for its implementation as they have a different characteristics uh, and requirements than conventional approaches to infrastructure provision. I'm really happy to announce that in September, in the road to the COP26, the OECD will co-convene. We discussed how the development and innovation of technologies and the policies make a difference and how the governance works as the essence of making triangular mechanism of those three pillars. 
to express our willingness to disseminate this message to the global water community, please, everyone use the sign language water. I will say, green we go, and everyone goes with the change we made by making water sign language with your finger. Ready? Green we go. Change we made. 2021 P4G Seoul Summit call for action titled as the carbon neutral smart water management for climate resilience. Hereby, the participants of the 2021 P4G thematic water session formulate the following recommendations. Seoul, Republic of Korea, May 31st, 2021. 